Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Lost Dogs here. For those of you who are tuning in again, welcome back. And for those of you who are just joining us, this is a podcast where we discuss very violent crimes, murders, disappearances of journalists who have disappeared or have been murdered in the news industry. So these are going to be really, really tough topics that we're discussing here. So due to the graphic nature of this content, we do just want to warn you all that your discretion is advised. You may see some graphic elements throughout this podcast or hear some topics that may not be pleasant to anyone under the age of, say, uh, 18 or so. So really going to touch on some mature content here. I just want to start off, as always, by introducing us to our panel of hosts. So I'm going to be John Hayes here. I'm Dylan Rouse. Andrew Will. And today's episode, Dylan is going to touch base. So Dylan, just kind of give us a general background of what this case is going to entail and go from there. So this episode is called The Disappearance of Azori Gwanda. He's a Tanzanian journalist, born and raised in Tanzania. Okay. If you don't know where Tanzania is, look on Google Maps. Um, Azori Gwanda disappeared in November of 2017. So about and, two years ago. Yes. And he's still no trace of him to this day. Uh, he disappeared while investigating a string of murders of police and go uh, government officials in southern Tanzania. Okay. So, it is an area very notorious for extremists and criminal groups, very close to borders of other countries that are going through civil strife right now. There's a lot of drug trafficking, human trafficking as well, um, gun running. Dirty, very di top, top dirty, dirty, dirty place. Anywhere. Yes, and he disappeared while investigating this. Um, the strange thing is that the government has not confirmed or denied his death, and there has been no trace of a body, evidence, and no one's seen him since the day he disappeared. Um, Gwanda worked as a journalist for Mwanchi Communications, which is a publication in Tanzania. Um, they focus on hard-hidden news, just like any publication here in America yeah. would. Think of them as a Tanzanian New York Times. Okay, kind so of such. They're big. Yes, but over there. yeah, it's mainly broadcast, print, journalism, such like that. Okay. Uh, he went missing in southern Tanzania after leaving on a suspicious business trip. So he didn't tell anyone where he was going. Oh, uh, his business was going down to investigate, but he was kind of shifty about it, keeping you know his cards kind of close to his chest, kind of mm -hmm. thing. Didn't want the story really leaking. Um, what the last person who saw him that has actually come forward was his wife. I hope I pronounce it right, uh, Noni. Uh, she said that after he got uh, after meeting up with him in the market and him telling her, hey, I have to go on some important business. It was last seen getting into a car, a actual white SUV, probably Toyota make, um, with three other unidentified men. And then that's the that the very last time he was seen. Um, Guando's co-worker said that he had an intense story about a gang of motorcycle assassins in the area targeting government officials and police. That's pretty intense. Yes. Uh, even though the target of the story was about cop killers, the police has made little effort to find Wanda. He's disappeared without a trace, and the government is very lacking in investigating where he actually is. Uh, it's weird because investigating the journalist disappearing Many people just assume he was killed by the motorcycle gang or yeah, kidnapped that's by the him. But no body has been found. They've searched the area, very minor, but nothing has really turned up since. So it's kind of a conspiracy aspect, like what really happened here. You know, yes. What really has the entire picture. Some government officials in Tanzania claim that he had been kidnapped, but no ransom has been posted. And it's not really the motorcycle gang's MO to kidnap. Especially journalists, you know, they'll make a lot of money. Probably not going to get a good ransom for them. Usually, the motorcycle gangs just pull up, do a hit and run, leave the body, and expect it to be found. But like I said he hasn't been found since. Um, 
Two hours after his disappearance, Gwanda's wife, Peony, Gwanda, uh, said she returned home from the market to find their house ransacked. As if they were looking for something. Now, now this now, is after he disappeared. After, well, this is the day of the disappearance. Okay. She returned home. No sign from her husband yet. No call, no nothing. And the house had been ransacked. Nothing was stolen. It wasn't a burglary. It looked like people had been going through drawers, going through closets, trying to find some certain piece of information, but no one's sure what it was. Um, two years after his death, here we are. The Tanzanian government has made a case of, oh, he's disappeared, or we're looking for him, but no actual official record of any searches or investigations or subpoenas or anything like that has actually been made. Um, a note to add is that a Tanzanian government official, um, Foreign Minister Kabuti, told a uh, Community to Protect Journalist, CPJ, Deputy Director, that the journalist was dead. He said this in an actual quote to him. So, so let me get this straight. They confirmed it without his family actually knowing anything about it? Like, they just told... That the official. government officially has no record of him dead or alive, but a government official said in passing to the deputy of the CPJ that he is dead. Wow. That sounds a little suspicious, don't you think? A little bit. A little bit. Um, after two years, Gwanda's family, friends, co-workers, and journalists all over the world have pressured the Tanzanian government to make an actual case to find this man. Um... Many free press organizations criticize the government for not trying hard enough and allowing journalists in the area to be harmed, impairing on free speech and free press. Now, the question I really have for y'all is, what should the government do to find this man? What do y'all think happened to this man? Andrew, you want to take it from yeah, I mean, you really have to start like, you know, why hasn't there been any real, you know, effort to find him is, you know, is the government trying to hide something that he was on to, you know, you have that whole conspiracy theory about that. It is suspicious that police nor any government officials really made any evidence. So that's kind of the direction that I would point is that there's something that's going on behind the scenes that was, uh, not going well for them it wouldn't shine them in the best of light you know uh you look at the journalist for the panama papers and you know he died from a car bomb and stuff like that it's just kind of suspicious things like that wherever you kind of wonder like is there government entities that are hiding something and the journalists you know they're trying to do what the journalists do pursue the truth and give it out to the public and it is a dangerous line of work because you know everyone can be your enemy at one time if the story that you're about to release is about to be something that's not good for their uh, appearance to the public. You know, you don't want to really have any negative things about you. And the journalist, while his job is to tell the truth, it's, you know, it can come off pretty negative at times. So that's just my thing, because you mentioned that the, the gangs, uh, they have a pretty MO of just shooting the body, leaving it for dead. And it is weird that the house was ransacked. Like, it, there was a lot more effort that went into it than just, you know, a standard hit and run. Yeah. Uh, no body's been found. House has been ransacked. And it, everyone is trying to keep quiet. So it's, I wouldn't, I don't think that that's your typical Tuesday for the gang. You know, I don't think that, uh, it doesn't sound like that. It sounds like something, some larger forces at work. You know, maybe the gangs are just to spur up trouble in the area and to, uh, you mentioned that there was strifes happening in the other countries. Maybe it was kind of a leak over of an unbalance in the area and that there wasn't a lot of uh, security, uh, even on the government's end and the police end. And so it was just overall bad, bad story for him to get into because he, you know, he's gone. The thing is, he was investigating criminals. Yeah. But the government is the one that's kind of got the bad rap on this. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's an interesting point to bring up as well here, because in America, like journalists have certain protections and certain rights, like we're still threatened constantly. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at an international journalist, you aren't, you don't really like 
take yourself out of that mindset that you're normally in of, oh, I have all of these rights, I'm protected. Mm -hmm. Whereas in some of these international countries, journalists are more threatened for covering these types of situations and can at times put their lives at risk or even go missing. So I think that that's a really important aspect to touch on, just that international aspect that you don't really see in a lot of these cases and they don't normally get brought to light as often. Definitely over in foreign countries, you know, it, you know it's a dampening on a free speech democracy to have your journalists, which are you know, the basis of your free speech and free press, be in danger um, when investigating you know, criminals who kill cops and government officials, why are they not putting more effort in to find this man? I, yeah, uh, even what, going off what John says, even like American journalists aren't really that safe going and covering a story overseas yeah. because like even the American government can't promise like their safety. They don't know, they don't know what's going to happen. You know, there's been a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of journalists that have gone abroad and they've, they have had their lives lost because they just entered a bad bad part of the story and everything like that. So I definitely do agree that a lot of people don't really – it's hard to take yourself out of that international mind aspect that, you know, you have all these protections, but when you go overseas, your protections are gone. They're, you know, there's nothing that you can really do. Um, that's all I have to say about that. The, uh, go ahead. I'm kind of interested, like, if – if this communications company that you worked for, if they like followed up with any like news about this, or have they like dived deeper into this investigation? Oh yeah, I, I didn't mention they that. Just let it go. Um, they're actually looking more towards they. Guanda didn't leave um, many notes. Like I said, he was playing it pretty close to the chest. Didn't want any leaks coming out about what he was going after. So, um, Monowachi Communications, the Tanzania publication. Um, they've been focusing more on finding this man, especially his co-workers and such. Um, they put out a story trying to find, have you seen, you know, this uh, white Toyota SUV? Yeah. And does anybody know about who might have been driving it? Who they were? Were they government officials? Were they other journalists? Nobody knows. And so that's really where Monowachi, um, is focusing on trying to raise awareness about the situation that happened two years ago and trying to find their missing coworker. So do you know if like his wife has gotten involved in this investigation? She goes and talks to the CPJ a lot. Mm -hmm. um, she's actually done some, you know, been brought over to the headquarters, done some announcements and stuff like that, saying, hey, please help me find my husband because she doesn't believe he's dead. She, I mean, she's probably holding on the hope. More than likely, he's you know, hidden somewhere, but I don't want to... Yeah. yeah, don't want to speak ill well. There are a lot of cases in which people have just disappeared for a while and showed up, but like that reality also has to be mm -hmm. somewhere present for her of my husband could be dead as well, and this could be something bigger than I'm capable of understanding mm -hmm. or something that someone's trying to cover up or not make look as clear as it actually is and i don't want to put any fault or liability on the government itself because we don't know that this is a government cover-up for sure but there are a lot of different areas here like andrew was saying of just the ranjack the the on uh, the breaking in and entering and just kind of the jumbling and stealing possible theft of some of their things so breaking into someone's home the same day that they disappear I feel like it's a little bit sketchy there. And there's been some people that criticize the whole story saying, well, there's a good chance that he just ran away off with his wife, you know, probably just went off in that SUV, came back home, grabbed everything he needed, and then left. But it's all been disputed by his wife and his co-workers by saying nothing was actually stolen from the house mm -hmm. that would be of, you know, living value. Everything was accounted for. It must have been a file, a piece of material, evidence, or something, and nobody knows who broke in and what they were looking for. I think that uh, kind of like a reminder to anyone wanting to pursue journalism is that since it is so dangerous to kind of talk to someone that you're close to and let them kind of know what's going on, because his wife seems to have no idea what he's working on, has no idea, like those people in the van and all that. Uh, it's very strange that, you know, if they were so close that you would think that he was kind of giving off, 
eerie vibes from the whole situation. You know, seeing a, a white SUV show up and three random people that she has no idea who are there. Like he, I can't imagine a situation where he was not looking kind of like sketched out by the whole situation. Navigate the line too, though, because yeah. a lot of the time journalists are tasked with having to keep all of this information internal and not disclose or name their sources. So to have to skate that line between, oh, what do I tell my family? What do I tell my wife? Mm -hmm. And what is important to tell her? What can I not tell her legally? And to save face on this story that I'm working on that I want to break and want to be knowledgeable. Yeah, about. it says something that he was so secretive with it, with his story that even his coworkers didn't know specifically what he was working on. You know, other journalists out in the field, he kept his sources very close. He didn't tell his wife much, and then randomly out of the blue, says, I am going off on a little business trip real fast, going down south towards the border, you know, three guys in an unmarked car, just gets in with them and leaves, and that's the last time he was seen. I think that's the strangest part to me. I'm not sure how the hierarchy of newsrooms work in that industry, mm -hmm. but just the fact that his news director didn't know, an executive producer didn't know, the other producers didn't know what he was working on, that's yeah. that's kind of the weird angle for me. Like they had, he had worked on like very violent stories in the past, and just the fact that he wasn't able to disclose this story to anyone, at least to give them a general idea of like where he was heading, I feel like that's, that's a little... Yeah, I think that's where I was kind of going with the whole thing is that like someone, I feel like personally there should be a lot more information available about this, like what he was actually doing. Um, another thing to mention too is that if the house got ransacked, that means someone was definitely scouting their house for a while now. Is that whenever she left for the market and came back, someone was probably there waiting for her to leave, you know. So this, this wasn't just, I, again, th there's a lot more gears in the uh engine for this kind of story i just i can't imagine what she must have gone through and she came back and then her husband didn't come back and the whole house is a mess and you know you don't really know what happened you know that's just uh the stories can't affect us even like closest to home and that that's definitely a story that affected her too yeah. so as compared to last week where we have all the facts and they were laid out it's all been documented the story it's Kind of, it's up for speculation. Yeah, it's really blurry and kind nope. of all over the place in terms of like what is true entirely mm -hmm. and what is just kind of speculation. Yeah, he disappeared like a ghost and no one's seen him at all. So, so I really wanted to get back to the CPJ deputy director noting that mm -hmm noting that Wanda was dead here. So yes. I feel like that was a uh, really <laughs> big nugget of information that just kind of made me go, what? And, and that's even a, thinking like, no. that's even a, um, it can't actually be proven because the CPJ deputy director said in an article that um, he was mentioned, it was mentioned by uh, the Tanzanian foreign minister just in passing. Okay. So it wasn't on camera, it wasn't written down or anything, it was, they were in a hallway, he was trying to get something from them, saying, hey, what about this guy, and just casually said, oh, he's dead. Now there's no exact wordage on yeah. what was said, but it's weird when the government won't further an investigation, mm -hmm. especially on a journalist who was inv uh, investigating the killers of cops and government officials, a huge problem down there in Tanzania. And then just one foreign minister who's high up ranking government official casually mentions that he's dead with no evidence to prove otherwise. See, it's hard. It's hard to find like a good excuse for him because on one hand you could kind of say he was morbidly joking or he was just fed up with being mm -hmm. asked questions about the incident but on the other hand it's like why would you say something like that when you know that this is an ongoing investigation like this person has been missing for almost two years now he has a family like why would you even dive into that territory and like free press organizations all around the world have been pressuring tanzanian government to look further into this help protect press rights over in africa and it seems like the tanzanian government has just been ignoring them 
there's they're just pushing it to the side saying okay we'll get to it and here we are two years later almost actually to the month so you know if like they foresee any updates coming of this or is it just kind of nope tanzanian government has not made an official statement on the case for over a year so just a lot of speculation it's a lot of speculation and a lot of uh, I can only assume is government corruption somewhere along the ladder. I think, I think uh, they're just kind of waiting for the whole thing to blow over. Well, I don't think that it, they're showing signs that it's you know it's going to blow over. They're just hoping people forget. You know, there's going to be always a group that don't forget. But as for a majority of the public, they they know that they're going to move on. It's it's a sad reality, but we have so much news coming in nowadays that you just get bombarded by you know stories like this and you can't hold on all the time to it and like keep on waiting 10 years down the line for something like that for some piece of evidence uh, i respect his wife and his co-workers for pursuing it so highly i mean that that's dedication but for the majority of the public i think the government just know that they're it's it's not going to be that big of a deal 5 years down the line to them you know they're probably already slightly moving on and you know going on to other things that they seem important well, that's their biggest, uh, his biggest advocates right now out there pressuring the government is actually uh, his co-workers from Murawachi and his wife are the ones that are constantly still campaigning, getting support from press organizations to pressure the Tanzanian government. Mm. Like, like I said, Tanzanian government just... Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, a lot of even even major companies, not just news industries or governments, but you can even see like whenever a major company does something kind of bad, they can do like a press blackout where they just don't talk to anyone, just hope the whole thing just blows over in a week. Uh, we see it multiple times, and you know even governments can do that too. There's a lot of times where a government official does something bad. And there's just no mention of it really, and they just don't want to really dive into it. And uh, I think I think that's the route that they're going to be going because two years down the line, and they still haven't said anything. That to me it seems like you're just not going to want to talk about it ever again, you know. And the, the lack of effort is not just on um, the lack of effort by the Tanzanian government is just not on finding uh, Azori Gwanda. It's also there's been a lack of effort to actually end the violence caused by these motorcycle gangs. When mm -hmm. I say motorcycle gangs, not you know, American choppers and leather. It's hit yeah. and runs with guys on the back of dirt bikes. Mm -hmm. Smuggled drugs, smuggled guns, and actually the violence has only increased. That's insane. So just kind of the rabbit hole that you guys were going down kind of leads into my question. I was just kind of curious about, uh, there's this term uh, that we cover in media ethics just surrounding like news organizations trying to like cover one event for a short period of time and they're all like jumping on each other's backs i don't know if you guys remember that term off the top of your head but they're all trying to cover the topic at the same time like just to get that content out and sensationalize it as well. i thought it was like racehorse or something like that wasn't it no I'm sorry i thought that was the term but okay go on but i know what you're talking yeah about. yeah so I'm, I'm just kind of wondering here if like there's been any recent surge of coverage on this or if it seems like it started uh, back when he first disappeared and then died out have, have you noticed like, it's any, have i, there been any recent articles I have covered? noticed that when it comes to all the research i tried to do on these motorcycle gangs i mean they have a name that i can, I can not pronounce on something but it seems like after his disappearance every time you try to do research on the violence and um uh crime down there it seems like azori guanda has actually stolen the light you look up these motorcycle gangs and you'll almost always find you know this story about the disappearance of azori so he's kind of like forever attached himself he's a to this and it's more so stolen the focus honestly that's kind of brilliant though when you think about it because like it seemed like he was trying to educate the public about these crimes that happen on a daily basis and you say that the crime rate doesn't really seem like it's going down so to kind of forever attach yourself to something like this what you are covering i feel like that speaks volumes and that sheds light on the fact that this is an issue that needs to be resolved yeah and guanda wasn't a you know, feature journalist going out doing nice little stories he was on a crime beat that was his actual job he did crime all the way through, made a name with him, uh, for himself, made a 
few enemies, I'm guessing. And uh, now it's just gone. How hard was it for you to find uh, American sources? Like, what did Wall Street Journal, New York Times, were they covering it uh, as well? They've all written articles about it. Okay. But, I mean, they just did the article. Any recent things? Nothing recent. No, all the, all, the recent, uh, all the recent articles I've found have been by the CPJ or um, by his old uh, business, Marachi Communications. That's interesting to me. I just... I feel like we have, I feel like Americans, like American journalists have this habit of like falling down a rabbit hole and just kind of focusing in on one thing. And sometimes it seems like they cover, they cover some international news, but they just kind of ditch it, toss it to the side and move on. But I feel like it's cases like these that really go to show like just how deep some of these cases can be. And I feel like it's very important to just shift the focus, like maybe just outside of our country and do a little bit more research into cases like these, because these are our people that are yep. going missing and being murdered. And just the fact that we still don't know what happened to them two years later, I don't, I don't really feel like it's acceptable. It's not just damaging to certain individuals. It's damaging to you know, a free press overall. Yeah. If, journalists cannot be protected in a democracy then you're missing out on free press which is one of the basis of a democracy any modern democracy yeah it definitely shows uh kind of a weakness in the chain of democracy for their country and it, it i think it sheds an eerie light that you know if you go on to a crime beat like that that the end could be the same and you're just gonna be forgotten i think i kind of think that maybe that was their message with it was that if you tried to get too deep into it you're going to be gone just like that. And like, I personally, for me, that's how I feel about like, that was their message about it. The mystery group behind his disappearance. Yeah. You know, trying to silence any press that would be negative, whether it's, you know, it was the gang, whether it was the government, whether he just, you know, tripped and fell and got buried or something. I don't know whether it was a, a group that was in that car. Not, not okay. As a journalist, your job is to uncover the truth. So, to go missing or be murdered just because you're trying to get more information about something, I, I don't really feel like that's okay. I feel like we need to work towards something to improve that or bring more light to that. And well, John, if you ever go out on a uh, on a crime beat, go ahead and just leave a little envelope with someone that says, open me if anything happens. Huh. Just as a little safe haven, which is where you should. Um, I think that's all we have time for right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. Make sure to give us a follow on Twitter at Lost Dogs Pod or like us on Facebook at Lost Dogs Podcast. And if you have any story ideas, be sure to send them to lostdogsok at gmail.com. That's it for this episode of Lost Dogs. We'll see you all next time.